Moving now to the receiver of the Fidelity 3000 base station, the first thing you need to do is what I feared. We need to connect a sweep generator to the base of transistor 3. Well, we have a sweep generator and it's on another bench in another building here. Um, now I know that this doesn't need that doing to it. And so what you need to, unless you have a sweep generator, and I know we bought ours at the right price, it was sub a thousand pounds. But you know, the kind of instrument that's 12,000 quid anyway. Um, you set the sweep generator 455 kilohertz and then you adjust uh, transistor, uh, transformer 3 and 4 for maximum output. So you have a signal, a, a sweep generator to the base of transistor 3. You connect an oscilloscope to resistor 29 and then you're adjusting 3 and 4 for maximum output and then you're adjusting T5 and 6 for maximum output with an S curve. Now, you know, this is complicated stuff. So you need to keep well away from T3, 4, 5 and 6 because if they've been upset, the only way is to do that with a sweep generator. Uh, and I'll just find where 3, 4, 5 and 6 are for you. I know some of those um, mobiles I've had to do that with, which is why we bought the sweep generator, which is bizarre when they are really cheap radios uh, that you have to have such a, a, an expensive piece of test equipment. So I'll just have a quick look in this uh, layout diagram for 3, 4, 5 and 6 so you know which ones to avoid. Um, T3, 4, 5 and 6. So 6, 5, 3, and I bet that's four. Right, so what does that leave us to be able to do? I mean, the radio is working great on receive, but you may come up where you need full alignment because if those are being played with, you're in trouble. Right, so we... It's one, two, three, and T2. So L1, two, three, and T2. L1 is, is under the on and off switch there. L1, L2, L3. Right, so, so we'll do those in that order. Actually, we've gained a bit there. At least you can get to them on the receiver. That's excellent. L1, 2 and 3. And then it says T2. Now is that the detector? It's got backwards and forwards in this manual. Well, we'll soon find out. But it doesn't use a normal type of IC. It's all transistor. Just check the location of T2. Just want to double check. It's the second one there. That could be the detector, so we're just going to check. Put a big signal on it. That doesn't seem to be. Okay. Yeah, looking back at how this works, the, the detector is done through the two you don't ever adjust, T5 and T6. Uh, it, uh, as I say, it doesn't use a, a chip for the um, FM bit. Uh, it uses um, a diode discriminator, so uh, it, it needs very careful setting up, and so that has to be done with a sweep generator, so we need to avoid those adjustments with the radio working properly as it is doing. So we've gained a little bit on the receiver, and uh, our next port of call is to make sure that we've got uh, S9 showing where 9 on the meter is. So I'll now switch the signal drainer to, to um, a 100 microvolt signal. We've actually got S5 showing on the meter, and hopefully that's adjustable. And it's adjustable with VR4. 
just zoom out so we can see both the operations. There we go. So we've now calibrated that for S9, so that's as it should be. I don't expect for a moment the squelch is pre-settable on this, but I will just look at the manual. I'm going to take my words back. It's SVR1, which is just there at the back. So we'll go through our normal test. We'll drop the squelch off altogether and turn the signal generator off, set the squelch for the threshold, put the generator back on. Yes, that's fine. Now we'll set the squelch to full and we'll see what kind of signal is needed to bring that in. Actually, that's perfect. It's a plus 30 at full. If that wasn't so, it's SVR1 to do that adjustment. So that's something which works nicely. And the way the squelch works on this is quite gentle. And uh, when we do a demonstration um, on the aerial, you'll, you'll hear it um, hopefully working well after I've told you that. So there we are. That uh, concludes the setting up of the receiver. Sorry it's being a bit patchy. I'm quite unfamiliar with these sets. I've gone through the manual with you. But you must avoid those four um, transformers unless you've got a sweep generator. Uh, otherwise, if they've been adjusted, it, it's going to have to either be done by somebody with a sweep generator or you're going to be uh, looking on eBay for one on the cheap. Because you'll never set up the... Uh, uh, if, if, you, if they're wrong, you end up with garbled receive. So the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. It sounds great on the signal generator, but when we put this on the aerial... Um, in fact, I'll do that now while we're on receive, uh, although this isn't an on-the-air test, just to make sure it isn't garbled uh, so that it, um, we can prove it's not being messed about with in that direction. Um, I do have the mic lead to do, so I won't be able to do an on-the-air thing today, but I, I will tomorrow. I'll just drop that to channel 19 and just see whether we've got anybody. It's not easy without the knob, huh? Well, that sounds great, so clearly they haven't ever been upset. Right, well, that concludes it. And we'll do an on-the-air um, thing tomorrow when I've uh, sorted the microphone lead out and put the radio back together. Thank you for watching.